Hello YouTube, I'm the Gaming Pegasus 187 for Side Scholar Sunday episode 16. It is 5.30 in the morning. I just spent eight and a half hours trying to beat Ninja Gaiden on the NES. It was challenged to me in the Gens Challenge by my fellow co-host on hey List, on the Hey Listen podcast, Cole Annoying Navi. I gave him Dark Souls. He gave me Ninja Gaiden. Now, in my naive way of thinking, I think, oh, this won't be as bad as I as it could be. It's like, oh, Unlimited continues, and I knew of the fucking thing where it doesn't. Where usually in this game, when you lose, when you lose at a boss, when you die. It just throws you back to the beginning of the last stage you play. So if you die at the boss on, you know, world, you know, stage, uh, in a world level three, whatever, it just throws you back to the beginning of the last full stage you played. If you die on one of the final bosses, uh, it throws you all the way back to the beginning of 6-1, and not back to the beginning of 6-3. Dick move, guys! Dick move! Oh on, oh, on that little, here's a little shit kicker for you. Not only will it throw you back to 6-1, so you know you have to play that, you have to play 6-2, which is insane. And then get through 6-3. But you have to get back to the boss with, with, uh, with as much health as possible. Why? Because <laughs> it doesn't refill your life bar. Yeah! <laughs> oh, and the third... Final boss? Oh yeah, this guy is fucking throwing either purple fireballs or it could very well be Barney the Dinosaur semen at you. This is Castlevania Bloodlines, by the way. As if you couldn't tell as I'm rambling and ranting. But the pattern with that, the final boss the last part of the final boss is very erratic. Yeah. You know, I've been playing video games for 20 fucking years. I can't imagine how frustrated I would be as a six-year-old playing that, that Ninja Gaiden as opposed to me at 24. I mean, I know Battletoads is insanely hard. I've never really tried to play through it. I've played the first stage a couple of times. And it's <laughs> okay. It's kind of cool. It's a good game, but goddamn. Ninja Gun is really good. There are games that will have limited continues. In fact, Ninja Gun 3 has limited continues. <laughs> I mean, I've, seen, I've played games that pulled that, you know, have dick moves. Period. I mean, Ghosts and Goblins is um, notorious for the dick move of having to play the game twice. This is just fucking insane. And I, I'm I know I'm playing on an emulator. I'm playing with the controller. It's like, oh, why don't you use save states? No. That's not how this is supposed to work. The idea is, I'm trying to beat it as I would if I was playing on the NES. Period. I had actually, before I had uh, got the Mega Man Anniversary Collection and started playing through, you know, those games, I had actually played through them on an uh, emulator and I save stayed the hell out of them. That's not really playing the game. But if I ever met these developers that. Decide just to give a big middle finger to you, not only throw three final bosses at you, but throw all the way you all the way to, to the beginning of 6-1. As well? Um I wish you have a rusty gunblade up their ass. Yeah. Uh anyway, uh 
Why are the Bellas feuding still? Why? They're feuding over their own name. I don't care. I don't care about Total Divas either. By the way, um... Do you parents that might be letting your six, seven, eight, nine year old daughter who happens to be a wrestling fan uh, wear a shirt that says Bremote on it? Uh, you need to be slapped. Because apparently, and this is originally I told Divas, I only know this because I watched the Spoonie Ones review of SummerSlam. Brie mode is when Brie Bella would get insanely sloppy drunk. Yes! Anyway. When Brett and Owen Hart feuded in, nine, in the 94, there was a, a, a good opportunity and a obvious, you know, they we got good matches out of it. See, no one wanted to see, in two, 2002, no one wanted to see the Dudley split up. I mean, we never even got a match between them. In 2009, when the Hart, when they split up the Hardys, no one wanted to see that. But we, it was an opportunity to get a ma good matches out of them. Not with the Bellas. You see, because they're not even, they're afraid to put them in a one-on-one -on -one match against each other. They put him in opposite on opposite sides of a tag match with AJ and Paige, and they th they still couldn't save it. I oh god. You know when you're even when you're afraid to even the, put the two you're having feud in a match together one on one um should be a sign of you not wa wanting to do it. Probably shouldn't do it. And the game, well, because well, fuck everybody. We don't give a shit. Obviously, they don't, because you've got. Oh god, I just want to see. You know, Ambrose is funny as hell. Yeah. Somehow they're dragging Cena into this feud. And by the way, on Raw, we got Cena versus Orton for the one millionth time. Fuck you. But. Ambrose is going after Rollins, gets him twice during the show, three times during the show. The second time is after Rollins had carjacked somebody. Yeah, apparently Rollins carjacking a guy is best for business. And he ends up chasing him down back in the hall or whatever, and he ends up getting locked in a closet. Uh, Stephanie says, uh, when have we ever thrown somebody out that doesn't come back? Alright, so they lock him in a fucking closet. By the way, Jamie Noble's one of the road agents. He's getting into this. He's putting guy in his fucking show calls and shit. <laughs> it's awesome. But... On main event, there was a Miz TV segment. With Miz and Damian Miz now. And by the way, uh, you pretty much completely made the... F not only did the Florida Georgia Lion thing at uh, Night of Champions make no sense... But you completely made it pointless when you have Ziggler win back the title the next night. So, Miz flat out asks him, how'd you get out of that room? Ambrose says, there's a back door. <laughs> More Ambrose, please. And I'm coming up near the end of the video, so I'm going to try and get through this quick, but... Big Brother has just ended for the season. Derek won, he was never even put up for eviction once. Which is amazing. But here's the thing. It was a very boring season and a very infuriating season. Not only did none of the, were all these people completely fucking incompetent, stupid, but they never had the balls to make any big move until near damn near the end of the game. They got out Joey, because she was a fucking idiot, week one. They got rid of Devin a couple weeks after that. But that was still early in the game. They weren't even... They were, it was almost like they were more just getting rid of because, okay, you're being an idiot, we're getting rid of you. But... <laughs> Frankie. Fucking Frankie. 
when you top Jesse as my most unlikable house guest, at least favorite of all time, you're a fucking moron. And just that unlikable. It's not because he's Ariana Grande's brother, and that was the only reason he was on. This He was on the show to further his own fame. Because he can't stand the fact that he's been living in his sister's shadow for I don't know how long. He was one of the most egotistical, fucking douchiest douchebags to ever douchebag. It's astounding. Before the season, my least favorite house guests of all time were... Jen and Jamaica from season 8 and Jesse the now professional wrestler but Frankie takes it to a whole new level he thought he was the best thing since wrestling and yes I just quoted a rap god he acted like he was God's gift to the world, like he's the best thing ever. He does everything he can to try and get out of his own sister's shadow. That's why he does what he does. He was such an attention whore. It's amazing how he didn't he wasn't booted off before. In fact, he was almost out oh, during that last uh, Battle of the Block challenge, that football one, when Caleb sat out to try and throw it, and then somehow he, Frankie still won, so he was fucking safe for the rest of the week. Ugh. And by the time they did wise up in one of the back door, and they didn't even take it, and this goes back to that whole house being completely ballless. No one thought to make a big move till damn near the end of the game, and at that point, it was almost fucked, unless if Frankie, if they never hit that damn reset button that Frankie was all gung-ho about. I think, uh, it wouldn't, they wouldn't have gotten rid of him, more than likely, because he could have very easily won that last veto in HOH. Who knows? What really sealed it for me, other than the fact that he was such an attention whore, and they've had gay people on before, but not this attention-seeking. Not this over-the-top annoying. Was the is, It pretty much seals it. It was the f final HOH, and there was it was one of those where they had to guess what had to finish the jury uh, member's statement. And Frankie's answer to the question, the two options were his, my biggest mistake in the house was either trusting Caleb or pushing that button. His ego is so out of control that he doesn't think that pushing that button was a big mistake. Especially knowing now what it did. He was so delusional that he thought that they were going to take him to the final four. Period. No, they were going to get rid of a big target. They tried to do it before. One time they didn't have the balls to make the move. The second time, they only got the chance because of the reset. It was all his fault he blew up his own game, but he can't fucking see that. Ugh. This season just fucking pissed me off. It's, it's amazing how no one had enough balls to... They should have fucking backdoored them when they had the chance, and they didn't fucking take it. They... 
it, Frankie proved that he was such an untrustworthy piece of trash. And if they really think, like if Caleb really thinks that Frankie was going to be trusted, <laughs> he's an even bigger idiot. Because Frankie was going to dump those guys when he had the chance. You know damn well that if he got the chance, he was going to dump those guys. Period. Anyway, those are my thoughts. I rambled on way longer than I intended, way more than I had footage recorded, so I'm throwing something else in here. I'm not sure what yet. I might. Oh, wait, I don't think I have any of my super castle. Uh, yeah, I don't have any castle any four footage, so I'll just throw something else up to the hell of it. Anyway, more than likely when you're going to be seeing this, it's going to be probably 8 9 in the morning, whenever it is, whenever I get it uploaded. Yeah, it's side score Sunday on a Monday, but that's what you get when I spend eight and a half hours trying to beat Ninja Gaiden, and I just get completely and utterly anally raped by birds. Pegasus, out.